Okay, good. Nice to be here. You're all very quiet. Which is something you <laughs> so I am. Um, I'm, I'm a bit of a history geek, and I was re- I've been reading a book of um, of uh, history in the 1960s. Right? It doesn't sound much like history to some of us, but but <laughs> but but is it is? And um, in 1963, at the end of 1963, um, they did a they did a survey. So 63, end of it. Um, the Beatles are sort of like taking the charts by storm, you know, they got their number one every week. And, um, and I think President Kennedy had just been assassinated, right? So you can sort of picture this. But they reckon, they did a survey, and they reckon that about a million people went out and bought a record, you know, a, a little disc, you know, of, um, uh, so that they, they had these charts, so you knew which, you didn't just download it on your phone. You, um, you had to go and actually buy a physical disc thing and um and uh, that's novel to some of you isn't it yeah. so about a million people do that but the survey found that about 19, 19 times as many people did something else all right so 19 million people so while you know in the in the papers it's all about the beatles and what what's happening to them and they're number one again but 19 million people were doing something else do you know what that was they won't go. No, they're not quite as many of the guys. Yet. No. No, we said that one. Billy Graham crusade. No, no, no. It's nothing very sort of. You're a very spiritual bunch. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm very, I'm very impressed. They potted around in their gardens. Yeah. So 19 million people were in their gardens, and. Um, that's just my, right, that's your fact for the day, all right? That, that's all you'll remember about today, isn't it, yeah? Okay? So, so gardening. Now, I'm no great shakes at gardening, Jan will tell you. I dig up all the flowers and think they're weeds and things like that. But, but I want to just use, we're, we're doing a series on grace, right? And I just want to use the, the theme of, of a garden, yeah, to, to illustrate some points about grace, to you, all right. So those those um, um, so that was a a sort of like intro, all right. Did you get that? So that that fact you remember: nineteen million people were, and that was the largest number of people that hobby that people had was in their garden. Um, now gardens, and I think I've got a couple of of um, slides here. So you might have your own back garden, you might not. Yeah. You might have um, Windsor Great Park you go to. What's up there? What's up? Yeah. So there's great diversity in gardens. There's national parks, aren't there? You know, there's the, the, the Pennines, the Peak District, the South Downs, national, national parks, areas of outstanding national, natural beauty. There's other sorts of... There's huge parks around the world. The, um, the next one, Steve, sorry, is, um, this is... This is one that's actually on the outskirts of a city, on the outskirts of Anchorage. And this is 2,000 square kilometres, this park. So this is quite a big park, right? This is quite a big area. And, it, and this is what it wrote about it. You know, it's got, um, there's 110 miles of skiing routes. There's, there's 280 miles of, that you can cycle around. That is a big park, right? Makes some of the parks in this country look, it's about the size of this country, I think. But, um, it, you know, but it has stunning valleys. It has glaciers. It has... It has mountains, it has lakes, it has wildlife, it's got salmon, it's got moose, it's got bears, it's got wolves, it's got, you know, it's, it's an incredibly diverse um, park, that one, an incredibly diverse garden. And um, the great thing is that God is a gardener, right? It's not like me, God is a gardener. And I just wanted, there's one verse. All I've got today really are two verses that you're going to need to remember. All right, this is one of them. It says now, now and it's um, from Genesis chapter two, chapter 2, verse 8. It says, Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. And God planted a garden. He got a garden ready. And it was some garden, I tell you. 
Yeah, it was um, the, the 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 word that the Greeks when they when they translated the Hebrew Bible into Greek, the word they used was paradiso. And you can see where they, we get our term paradise. And this garden, this was some garden that he created <laughs> there. It had, um, and if you read through, you can see, in, in, you can read through, I won't read through it all, in, in chapter 2 of Genesis, it talks about um, rivers, rivers that separate into four other rivers, two of which are the Tigris and Euphrates, which are pretty big rivers, you know. So this, this has got a huge river. It's got mountains. It's got hills. It's got loads of minerals and, and precious, precious stones and precious metals. It's got livestock. It's got birds. It's got wild animals. It's got all that stuff that, that talked about in that, um, in that, that park in, um, in Ankara. It's got incredible stuff. It's got a man and a woman. It's got love. It's got no shame. It's got God there in it. It's a garden where God walked with the people. He walked with, you know, we call it Adam and Eve. He, he walked in the garden. So God was there. And where God was there, then all this stuff is just blooming. It's just going, yeah? He didn't need anyone to help him. He got, it, that's grace. He just gave them this amazing, amazing landscape to live in. Yeah? And that's what they call it. That's what we call a Garden of Eden, all right? It's what they call paradise, <laughs> And that's where we get, get the term from. And um, we'll come back to that later. Those pictures, by the way, are, I took those. So that's you know, the only ones I, I took. Um, of various places. I won't go where they are. But the trouble is, man messed up, didn't we? You know, if you know the, the picture, the story from, um, from Genesis, man said, my will be done. We talked earlier that Jesus said, you know, thy will be done. Man said, my will be done. And, and sort of all this gracious giving, all this stuff, all this amazing thing that God had given him, they said, I don't want that, I want this. They chose something that really threw back to God <laughs> all the grace that, that had been lavished on them. And they said, of all those things that you've given us, I, adore, I want this other thing. I want something, something else. And, um, and as a result, they lost this paradise. That's a tragedy beyond tragedies. <laughs> yeah? they, lost, they lost that paradise. And God put, it says he put cherubim, he, he cast them out and, he, and they put cherubim, he put these this, this swords flashing so that there's no way back. You know, the, I've got Gandalf there, you know, saying, you, you, you know, that you shall not pass. There, there's, a, there's a cherubim on the, on the entrance to this park that's going, no, you, you can't get in. You can't get in. You're outside. And that was where we, where we went. And we've, we've tried, Adam and Eve tried putting on fig leaves, didn't they? You know, to cover their shame. And, and to be honest, us as humans, we've been forever <coughs> putting on fig leaves or putting our hands over the microphone. Yeah. Um, we've been putting on fig leaves. We've, we've been trying to sort of get back to the garden. Joni Mitchell wrote a song that said, we've got to get ourselves back to the garden. She wrote a song. And, you know, we, we keep trying to get back to the garden, don't we? We try to get back to that amazing, amazing place where there was love and where there was beauty and where there was creativity. And we're forever trying to, trying to do that. But we, we, we try lots of ways, don't we, to get back to the garden. But God is forever trying to get us back into the garden. That's what we've been celebrating. That's, that's what we've been celebrating today. Him, and, and we'll come to that, Getting us, trying to get us back into that place where he lives, where there's beauty and where there's creativity and where there is wonder. <laughs> and he wants to get us back to that, to that place. And all through the Bible, and I just want to give you a quick summary across the, across the Bible, right, of, of this idea of him continually reminding us, there's a garden there, guys, you need to get back to. You know, I graciously gave you this and I want you to get, to get back there. And... Um, you know, Eden, Eden is represented as a, as a temple because it's what, where God is. The temple itself is represented as a garden. When, when Solomon built a temple in Jerusalem, it has hundreds of references to gardens in it, to animals, to wild animals, to trees. trees loads of variety of trees were used to build it. It was, had, had timber everywhere. <laughs> 
and it had gold and it had onyx, it had beautiful minerals, it had things that represent, it had images of, of, of animals, in, images of, of birds, it had cherubim all over the place, reminding them that they couldn't get back, but reminding them that there's a garden that you need to get back to, guys. And that was what was in the temple. In the, in, in the Song of Songs, that beautiful, beautiful love song that talks about that love that was there at the beginning between, between Adam and Eve, that, that pure love where there was no shame, that and which points forward as well to the, to the marriage between Jesus and his church, yeah, the husband-wife sort of relationship <laughs> there, that beautiful song. I've only read the first couple of chapters of that, and I found practically every verse had a reference to animals, birds, trees, beautiful jewels. It has reference to gardens all through it, and a lot of that takes place in a garden because that's God reminding us, guys, you need to get back to this garden that I've given you. You need to get back to my grace, to my, to my provision. And um, it, at the end, of, in Revelation, there's a, there's a garden city. There's a garden city being created. There's a river that runs down this city that then has the tree of life. It has great um, fruitfulness around it. There's a, there's a, that's what God is aiming at, is something that will, will be that garden again for us, that beautiful place. So that's what he points to at the end. But in between, there's, there's, there's some references to, um, to another, a couple of other events that happened in a garden. One was where, Je- where Jesus reversed that curse of, hi- of us saying, my will be done. Because he said to God in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, your will be done. And he reversed that curse. He reversed that, that, that inclination we have to say, my will be done. The other thing that happened in a garden, which was the garden where Jesus was appeared and was rose again, is that life came through that garden. And that happened in a garden. And he appeared to Mary in that garden. And she thought he was the gardener. You get that? She, and she was right. Yeah? Because he was the gardener. He appeared to her in a garden near to where, the, where the, the, the crucifixion took place. And she thought he was the gardener. Remember it says that in the Bible? In the Bible? And that's because he was. He is the gardener. And he wants you to get back into this amazing, beautiful garden that he has created for us. That is grace. And what happened, the key crux happened outside of a garden. The thing we celebrated just now happened outside of a garden. And on that cross, and, and I think there's a quote up, up there. I hope there is. I can't see behind me. All right? And up there, it, on, on that cross, the thief said to him, one of the thieves said to him, um, he said to his mate, you know, we, we are justly being crucified here. He isn't. And he said to Jesus, you know, remember me. And Jesus said to him, remember the words? He said, today you'll be with me in paradise. And that happened outside of a garden because the gardener came outside of the garden to put his arm round us and take us back into the garden. Do you get that? That's what he's done for us. That's what he did for us. He's, he's brought us back into that garden. He's brought us back to that place that he wanted us to be. And that's grace. Yeah? As Peter sort of set out last week, fantastically, by the way. Yeah? That, that was... That's, that's grace, him doing for us what we could not do and, come and taking us back into the garden. But that creates a problem for us, doesn't it? Because we, we accept that. And the, the problem is that we either go, well, God's done everything, so I don't need to do anything. <laughs> yeah, We take him for granted. Or... We keep saying, that's too good to be true. I'm going to have to do some extra stuff 
to, to make sure that I get in to the garden. I get back into the, into the kingdom. And that's our predicament. That's what we do all the time. And I suspect all of us are either on one, one towards one or the other extreme of that. Yeah, we either think, well, I don't need to do anything here. Yeah, I, I am really, you know, it's, it's free ride from, from now on. Or we do what the, what the Galatians church did and said, wow, well, no, we, we need to do a bit more. We need just to make sure, you know, that's not, that his death is not sufficient for me. And as we, as we sang earlier on, I think there's no other way, there's no other way that his death. And I think our culture creates in us, we, we have a sort of performance culture. It's really, I think it's really hard for us. I think the, the second of those is the more difficult because we think, I've got to perform. I've got to perform. That, that Peter talked about the prodigal son coming home last week. The, the prodigal son thought he had to perform. It, I'd go and I'd, I'll have to be, I'll have to sort of become a slave, become a servant. I'll have to. And his father comes out. He didn't want a slave, he wanted a son. And he, he wants us to come to him as sons, not as servants, not as slaves. Yeah? And, and our, our culture, I think it's really hard. In a Western culture, everything is about your performance. Everything is about how good you are at whatever it is you do. Yeah? You're promoted in your job because you're good. You're, you're allowed to do things in the church because you can, you, you, you've proven yourself. Yeah? But you know, we need to break that, guys, that performance culture, that, that thing in our head that says, this is what it's like, that you have to perform. The problem is, we do have to perform. Yeah? The problem is we need to get that balance right between us think, you know, re- thinking we are required to perform and, um, and the fact that we, we actually do. And I'll come to that in a minute. Because we, th- we were thrown out of the garden not for incompetence, yeah, but for, for, for sort of thinking we can do it ourselves. Yeah? It, it, God didn't say you, you didn't throw them out because they've not done a good job. He threw them out because they threw back grace into his face. He said, we don't, we don't want it. And there's another verse. This is the second verse you've got to remember. Okay, In Genesis chapter 2, again, later on in verse 15, it says, the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And that's what he says to us. He wants us to get into, as, we, as he's taken us back into the garden, it's to work it and take care of it. And I'm going to pick out um, you know, three areas where I think that, that we just need to, um, to, to sort of get this in our heads, yeah, and how we, how we can do it. It's what Paul, um, Paul calls living in the grace of Christ. How do we live in the how do we live in the grace of grace of Christ? That's our that's our, our predicament. But if you think about what you do in a garden, you do weeding, you do mowing. Some of us do. I don't. But but <laughs> but you know, you you if you had a big park, you'd have people who'd, who'd show visitors round, people who'd promote what's in that garden, people who'd tell you, you know, write up about it and write write stories about it, people who would um, who would pay the wages of the people who work there. People who would, I don't know, provide food and sustenance for people who visit. It, you know, there's a, there's a, in this garden, there is a ton of jobs to do because it's a big garden. Yeah? It's like that one in, in Alaska. It's huge. There's jobs to do. There's snow to clear. Um, and the point is, there's a job for everyone. And, those are, that, and, and God in his grace wants us to help him. It's not that he couldn't do it. He's... he's built the thing in the first place it's just in his grace he wants us to work with him he wants us to work with the gardener and so we need to be like mary and go are you the gardener <laughs> what do you want me to do where do you want me to where do you want me to go um, and there's there's stuff to do and i just want to i just want to first pick out there are i think i've got the verses up there there are three ways in which we uh, we can work with God and which, we, which will last forever. 
And those are things that we do through faith and hope and love. And it says in Corinthians, doesn't it, 13, 13, you know, these three things remain, faith and hope and love. And if we're going to build this garden and build this garden city, actually, then it's with faith and hope and love. And those are the ingredients that we need to, to bring to this party, is our faith and what Jesus does. It's our hope of what we, you know, we have and, and hope that's certain and sure. And it's love. It's love for people. It's love for each other. It's love for God to, to do his stuff. And so it is from gra- it is it is grace from first to last. Um, there's a brilliant quote from Paul. It says in in one Corinthians fifteen ten, Steve. I think it says, "But by grace of God, I am what I am, and His grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but it was the grace of God that was in me. And it's the grace of God. We we come in by the grace of God. We we work by the grace of God." The, the, the thing carries on with us. Um, you know, and that's, that's what Paul says. And I've got, just got three, three Gs. You have, to, you have to... I do apologise for these, because these Gs... I, Gs with grace, you know? So I thought, let's, let's do three Gs. Um, and they are... There's three things that I think we can work on in this garden. One is the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Gifts, all right? The gifting that we, that we have. The second is, and I've had to put this in, general work. What do you do in your every day? What are you doing in your every day? Whether it's voluntary work or paid work or, you know, whatever. Whatever you're doing, it's that general work. And the third one is generosity. And those are, those are the grace features, three of the great, they're just examples of the grace features we can show in this, um, in this garden that we're now part of, this paradise that he has brought us into. And I just want to quickly touch on those. The, the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the word is charisma. So have you got charisma? I'm looking around, I'm going, what? <laughs> Who's got charisma here? <laughs> you have all have, <laughs> right? Demonstrate it. The, the, the word is, it comes from charis, which is, um, which is a gift. Um, Charisma, yeah, that's what we need. It's the gift of the Holy Spirit in us. And we all need the Holy Spirit to help us. Um, Paul says, you know, it's, it's grace that equips us. He equips us for ministry. He, he empowers us to do that stuff. So it's not now our efforts. It's not our fig leaves, as it were, that we're trying to do. It's working with the Holy Spirit. It's a Holy Spirit thing. That, that happens, um, that empowers us and equips us to do the work. And whatever your gifting is, and like I said, I think you've all got charisma. You've all got charisma. Don't everyone ever tell you that you haven't, because the Holy Spirit is there. And, he, and you have gifting. You have gifting. And I don't care whether it's you know, mowing the lawn, to use an analogy, or it's, um, it's running a huge you know, bit of the park, or, or it's, it's helping visitors, or it's showing people, it's providing catering. Whatever it is, you know, those giftings are coming from the Holy Spirit to you. There's work, and I don't, and, and I don't know what you, what you do day to day. It might be you just do the, you know, the washing up, I don't know. But, but he can help you there. Um, my experience of work, of, of you know, paid work, is that I'm astonished at how often God turns up. I was, I went, I was in work to, uh, on Friday and, and I was talking to somebody about, um, somebody from Sutton Vineyard, Steve, who you'd know, because Steve knows somebody at Sutton Vineyard, you know, who, who, and I could, I could relate to them, I could talk to them about what was going on there. Um, and in my, in my work as well, I'm always astonished. I look back at things that I've done in the past because I often reuse things, yeah? And I go, how did I do that? And I, I'm always mystified as to how, how I've done things in work. It's a miracle. But if we involve the Holy Spirit, if we do things with faith and hope and love, 
then those things will happen. Your work will be transformed, whatever it is you do, because God's in it with you. And your work is, you know, is equally important. We want to bless this whole community, don't we? We want to bless this whole world. We want this garden to fill the whole world. So wherever you are, whatever you do, that is crucially, crucially important to building this garden. We're building a garden city at this time. Are you getting all these analogies, yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, of what what we're about? It's a huge, huge project we're on. It's a huge, huge garden that we want to fill the whole creation. Um, Finally, a, a generosity. He does, um, um, unfortunately for some, you know, we, he does, um, the, the, the grace works on our wallet. Grace works because this, this kingdom, this park requires, you know, you talk to any park keeper, you know, it requires effort, it requires people, it requires money. And, um, and he works on our, on our generosity. He worked with um, uh, the, the, the church in Corinth to provide for, for people. And I think there's a, there's a quote up there from, um, from Corinthians, you know, that, that, that Paul was encouraging this, this church that, you know, if you, if you sow sparingly, then you reap sparingly. And, and, uh, but if we sow generously, then we'll reap generously. And it's an encouragement for us to show faith and hope and love with our money. And again, I, you know, I've never had... Uh, I've had good jobs, but I've never had tons and tons of money. Yeah, I don't. I haven't inherited any from from, from my parents. Yeah, but, uh, but but and I and for those of you who are you know got kids at the minute, it seems really tough. But I just want to assure you that the generosity of God is better than the generosity of you. He will provide. He will provide. He will get you through whatever you see as hard times. And I think there's people around here all nod about that and say, it's, it's hard, it's tough sometimes, but he gets us through. And as a church, I'm always amazed. I remember when we bought this building, I kept looking at the bank account, and it didn't go down. It was astonishing. It was, it was uh, amazing that w- the provision of this building for us is, is incredible. It's a miracle, Yeah. So God is incredibly generous and we need to sort of allow him to help us to be incredibly generous as well. Because as we said earlier, he's, given, he's provided that for nothing for us, all that we have. So I want us just to get that balance right between grace to get us into the garden and grace working in us when we're in the garden to create this amazing, amazing, beautiful thing that God is doing to build his kingdom, to build his church, to build his community, to build this amazing, amazing thing that we are part of. And I just want to encourage you to do that, to to not to think it's, I don't have to do anything, and not to think that I have to do everything, (laughs) but to find some balance in the middle that we can work with. Thank you.